Hey Moonies, it's time for another episode of Watch Sailor Moon Learn Japanese. So this is actually part four, I believe, or part three of a series that I'm doing where I break down the first episode of Sailor Moon in Japanese and I explain what each word means, what each grammar rule means so that you can really learn Japanese and really understand what the characters are saying and get down deep. If you haven't already watched my first couple parts, I have a playlist for this. I break it down one scene at a time typically, so you're not going to be completely lost if you just watch this video first. But yeah, do check out the other videos in my series. Also, one of you guys mentioned there's this site called Dai Weeb, and I went there and yeah, it's kind of cool. They have uh, a lot of episodes of anime up there with both Japanese and English subtitles. So it's kind of a cool way for you to like you know, you can pause it and like read the Japanese subtitles while reading the English subtitles and kind of learn Japanese a little bit that way as well. So check out that site. They're not a sponsor. Just check them out. So this scene of the first episode of Sailor Moon, this is where we first meet our villains, Beryl, Jedite, Morga, the other minions. Uh, and so consequently, the speech patterns, the vocabulary and such in this uh, episode, my episode, this part of the episode of Sailor Moon, uh, they're not really conversational Japanese. So you, you're not necessarily gonna wanna bust these out in conversations with Japanese people, uh, unless you wanna sound silly or like a super villain. But uh, a lot of villains in anime talk like this. They use this kind of speech pattern. So to illustrate the difference between like villain speak and normal person speak, you know, if somebody took my lunch, I'd be like, hey, you're going to pay for that. Um, whereas if I'm a super villain, I'd say something like, you shall pay for what you have done to me. You know, it's, it's more heightened. It's more, you know, kind of old style speaking not really conversational Japanese for contemporary people. But a lot of anime characters speak like this, a lot of villains, a lot of you know very heightened kinds of characters do speak like this, so it's very useful to understand it if you want to watch anime and understand Japanese. So let's get to it! So Beryl says, Maboroshi no Ginzui Shou wa mada mitsukara nu no ka. Uh, no Ginzuisho. This is the silver crystal. This is how it's always been translated. So let's break that down though. Uh, gin zi sho. If you look at those three kanji, gin is silver, and then zi sho or sui sho is crystal. So it literally is silver crystal, gin zi sho. Maboroshi no, though, um, maboroshi is, it's kind of a strange word. It's really hard to translate. It mean like phantasm, the mystical, um, the elusive. It's kind of like maboroshi no would be something you'd use to describe like a unicorn. It's like it's a mystical thing that might not exist. It's really rare, kind of hard to find. Um, but yeah, it's that kind of word. So it's not just the silver crystal. It's sort of like the legendary is kind of how it was uh, translated, which isn't quite right. That would be densetsu no Ginzui Shou. That would be the legendary silver crystal. But it's more like the elusive silver crystal, the mysterious silver crystal, the mystical silver crystal, the phantasm <laughs> silver crystal, the phantom silver crystal. It's the silver crystal that's, that's very rare, doesn't necessarily exist. Um, it's kind of a wonder, it's kind of a mystery. That's what it is. So you add a wa after maboroshi no ginzui shou. So the wa is basically the particle that notes this is what we're going to talk about is the silver crystal. We're going to say something about it. As for the silver crystal, mada means still, mitsukara nu. <laughs> All right, so mitsukara nu is the like old-timey Shakespearean villain way of saying mitsukara nai. So mitsukaru is to find something, to locate something that was lost. Mitsukara nai, you change the du to da nai, it becomes the negative form of that, so to not find something. Then if you change the nai to nu, it, it's more, I'm a villain, <laughs> I'm a royalty. So mitsukara nu means uh, not find. So mada mitsukara nu means still not find. And then noka is uh, a question marker basically at the end of the sentence. So the silver crystal, as for the silver crystal, still not found question mark. 
Notice there's no pronouns in here. She's not saying, oh, has this, have you still not found the silver crystal? And rightfully so, because she would kind of be asking this in passive tense. Has the silver crystal's location still not been found? Um, it's, it's like that, because she's asking like her sea of minions. And then the minions all answer, hi. So this, this is interesting. Uh, if you ask a question with a negative, like mitsukara nu, mitsukara nai no ka, um, haven't found silver crystal, if you answer yes, it is yes, it has not been found. It's not yes, it has been found. In English, it would kind of be like, if you answered yes to that question, it would be like, yes, I found the silver crystal. But um, they're, they're confirming. She's basically saying, silver crystal has still not been found, question mark. Remove the question mark. Silver crystal has still not been found. And then they're, they're just confirming, yes, the silver crystal has still not been found. It's like that song, yes, we have no bananas. <laughs> it sounds kind of funny in English to respond that way. Um, so you could translate the hi as no in this case. And my rice is done. I'm going to go check that. <laughs> yes, we have no bananas. So back to barrel. She says, So, oinaru means like great, like grand, majestic. Oinaru, <laughs> it comes from oki, it's that same kanji which means like big, vast, so vast, grand. Wagashi haisha. So waga, that is a my in this case, not just I. So waga, shihaisha is ruler. So my ruler. So oinaru wagashi haisha means our great ruler, our great leader, our great controller. Um, put that whole phrase in brackets, our great controller. Wa, so that's a particle wa again. So as for our great uh, ruler. Jubun na energy. So energy is energy. And they're using the English version of it for this because it's kind of an abstract concept. Like we're going to zap energy from people. It's like, that's weird. Uh, so I think that's why they use the English word energy. And then um, like the Japanese ver version of that would just be key, probably like your life force, your spirit. Jubun uh, na is uh, plentiful. Um, it's an adjective. It's a na adjective that means like plentiful. Uh, so enough, kind of plentiful. So jubun na energy means like enough energy, plentiful energy. Uh, you add o to the end of the plentiful energy. So that means if you're adding wo to the end of something, it means that a verb is going to happen to it. So the noun is the plentiful energy. Uh, the o notes that the next verb that comes right after it is happening to the plentiful energy. So motomete Orareru. <laughs> so motometeru would be like the way a normal person would say it. And motometeru means is seeking, is is longing for, is striving to acquire. So a normal person would say jubun na energy o motomete iru or motometeru. Um, but motomete orareru <laughs> is sort of like the passive tense. So motomete oru um, is like the noble way of saying um, is seeking out. Um, just the noble way of saying that, motomete oru versus motomete iru. Motomete orareru is the passive form. So Beryl herself is not seeking out the jubun na energy. Um, Metalia, the oinaru shihaisha, the great ruler, is the one who is seeking out this energy. So she's talking about somebody else, so she's using the passive tense of the verb. <laughs> So she mentions the ginzui sho again, silver crystal, ginzui sho ga. Ga is the subject marker of the sentence, so we're going to talk about this ginzui sho again. Teni haira nu. <laughs> so this is the noble royal bad guy way of saying teni ireru, teni hairu. So teni hairu would be the way I would say it, and that means uh, to get basically, to get into your hands. So instead of teni haira nai, which would be the negative version of teni haira, which means to get something, so to not get something, teni haira nu, <laughs> again, that nu ending instead of nai, it's just the um, villain slash royal person's way. I mean, she is a royal, she's a royal villain, so it's basically that way of saying um, not get. So ginzui sho ga teni haira nu means the silver crystal is uh, not 
uh, being received. Uh, not receive the silver crystal. It's not passive tense, it's just silver crystal, not receive. There's no pronouns. <laughs> no nada. So you're basically taking that phrase, silver crystal, not being received, and then you're adding a conditional to that. So the no nada basically adds an if to the beginning of that statement. And this is gonna be like an if-then statement. So this is the first part of her if-then statement. It's like if, um, if one <laughs> a person, we're not using pronouns here, if uh, silver crystal not found, mazua, that is first off, ningen domo. <laughs> so ningen is human, and then domo is kind of a way of pluralizing humans. That's not exactly that polite. And it's not exactly like rude rude either, but yeah, it's, it's not like the human race or humanity. It's like the humans. <laughs> it's like the humans, kind of like the way an old-timey bad guy would talk. So, ningen domo no, that no is like an apostrophe s, so the, the humans. Energy, once again, energy. So, ningen domo no energy, the humans energy. Mazua, ningen domo no energy. So first, our first step is uh, the human's energy. You're adding a wo to the end of the human's energy. So the human's energy is our noun. The wo notates that the next verb is going to happen to the human's energy. And that verb is ah, sasageyo. So sasageyo comes from sasageru, which is the root form of the verb, and it means to give, to bestow. Like sasageru is, is kind, of, kind of like a more ceremonious way of saying to give something. Ageru would be the way like a normal person would say it. But sasageru is like to offer up unto thee. It's like that kind of verb. So sasageru is just the verb. And then sasageyo is like, let's do this thing. So let's offer. So that whole sentence is, if, uh, we can't get the silver crystal, and again, the we is not really a pronoun that's being used in the sentence. I'm just putting it in there because English sounds weird if you don't use pronouns. <laughs> so if if we can't get the silver crystal, then first, our first step, you know, in the meantime that we'll do until we can get the silver crystal is we will offer, we will bestow human, the human's energy to Queen Metallia. It's implied. She didn't say it specifically, but it's implied. Queen and then Jadeite makes his first appearance. Queen Beriru sama. All right, so Queen Beriru sama. That's almost like redundant because Queen is an honorific and sama is an honorific. However, in Japanese, they don't necessarily recognize that Queen itself is an honorific. It's like her name is Queen Beryl. Like her first name is Queen, her second name is Beryl. Uh, so yeah, sama, it basically just, you know, it's an honorific that's very, very, very respectful, reserved for royalty and the like. Um, not necessarily always royalty, like I might call a CEO of a company Sama, and if I'm addressing a letter to somebody, it's also Sama. But yeah, in this case, it's basically just Queen Barrel. Just eliminate the Sama, you don't need it. Sono Yakume. So, Yakume is duty, and then Sono means that, but it specifically means that thing uh, in relation to you. So, Jadeite's the speaker, Barrel is the person he's speaking to, Sono, anything, would be in reference to Barrel. So, Sono yakume means that duty that you spoke of, basically. The duty of gathering energy from the humans. So sono yakume, comma, um, he could have added an o to the end of it. You can kind of think of the comma as an o. You don't always have to use particles, by the way, guys. You can just kind of leave them out, and people do in regular <laughs> Japanese. So sono yakume, parentheses, o, particle. So a verb's going to happen to that. Um, kono jedaito. Uh, this jadeite is what it literally means, but again, kono references the speaker. So kono can mean this, but it can also mean ni, basically, or I. So kono jadeite kono ni makase yo. So makaseru is to leave something to someone, to entrust something to someone. So if you say X ni makaseru, you're basically saying um, leave it in the care of X, X will handle it, that kind of thing. So jadeito, kono jadeito ni makase yo means uh, you can leave it to to I, you know, the great jadeite, <laughs> or I, your loyal servant jadeite. It has that kind of feeling to it. So yeah, instead of makaseru, which is the root form of the verb, makaseyo is like, um, why don't you, <laughs> or you shall, or I suggest, might I suggest, let's, you know, it's that kind of thing. Leave it to me. It's more like an imperative, but not like a leave it to me imperative, more like, ah, leave it to me. I shall handle it for you. <laughs> He goes on to say, Sudeni, 
So sudan ni means like as we speak or already. Um, it is already in progress. Waga haika. So this waga thing again. So it means my waga. Haika means uh, my underling. So haika no means uh, the haika is basically the adjective for the next noun that's going to come after it, which is yoma. This is a very common Sailor Moon specific term, yoma. I don't know if I've even heard it come up in anywhere other than Sailor Moon. Probably has, but I haven't. So check out the kanji for yoma, the breakdown of what each kanji means. And then put those two kanji together, those two meanings together, and that's kind of what yoma means. It's like an eerie, bewitching, demonic, witchy sort of monster creature, basically, is what yoma is. Um, so, waga haika no yoma. So my underling yoma, my servant yoma, my slave yoma, basically. Moruga, so her name is Morga, Moruga. I assume it's Morga. Ga, so... Put that whole thought of like waga haika no moruga, yoma no moruga, that's the whole thing in brackets, ga. So the, the subject of the sentence is his underling yoma morga, ga. So we're going to say something about morga. Ningen domo no energy. So you probably remember that phrase from a couple lines back, the human's energy. O, so some verb is going to happen to the human's energy. Atsumete orimasu. All right, so that comes from the verb atsumeru which means to gather, to collect. Um, atsumete iru would be the way a normal person would say it in plain, casual conversation, which means is gathering. So atsumete oru, again, you're changing that i and iru to o, oru, that basically makes it more like regal, more like old speak, more heightened dialogue, um, rather than casual, like contemporary speech. Uh, and then he's being polite, so instead of atsumete oru, it's atsumete orimas, right? He's very polite to her because he's her bitch. <laughs> he's her underling. He serves her, so he's going to be using very polite speech patterns with her. <laughs> and then Beryl says, Omae ni makaso, jedai to. So, omae is you. And it is kind of a condescending you, not necessarily like a being mean condescending you, but it's basically showing if I call you omae, I have higher status than you, basically. That's what omae is showing. Sometimes it's it can be kind of mean if I call you omae, but sometimes it can also be endearing. Like I might call my pet cat omae, and I might call a annoying kid omae. So basically she's just, I'm above you, and she is. <laughs> so omae ni makaso. Remember the ex ni makaseru? Same concept, but instead of makaseru, which means to let somebody take care of something, makaso is I shall or let's. Um, this is this thing. Yes, let's do this. So I shall entrust you with this task, Jedi. And then Jedi says, ha. So ha. It doesn't necessarily mean ha, as in ha 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 or ha ha. It can also mean Yes, or I. I often translate that as I, A-Y-E, I. It's kind of like, yes, sir. Okay, now we're away from the villains for a moment. <laughs> and Usagi says, So, sugoi means uh, amazing. But <laughs> it can also, if, if used as in this way, like, uh, It doesn't mean Wow, what an amazing person. <laughs> it means, wow, it's so crowded here. So it's kind of like hella in that, in that sense. It's like, whoa, there's hella people here. Um, it means like there's a lot of people here. That sugoi is kind of like hella. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Uh, yeah, it means like, wow, look at all the people here. Yashaimase. This is another very common phrase. It's just the thing that shopkeeps say. It doesn't necessarily mean welcome to my store. It doesn't necessarily mean step right up. It, it's just a thing that shopkeepers say when they're trying to hawk their wares to other people. It's kind of like, hi, I'm selling stuff. <laughs> it doesn't really mean anything. Like, it does mean welcome, but we don't say that in English. We're not like, welcome to my store. <laughs> it's like, it's more like just, hi, hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's that kind of thing. Dozo ni. 
That's a very common phrase. So dozo means like please go ahead. Gojiyu uh, ni. So jiyu means free, freedom. Gojiyu ni is a very polite way of saying like、um, feel free or be free. So dozo gojiyu ni means like ah feel free too by all means dot 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 something. Teni totte goran nasai. Teni toru means to take in your hand, literally. Te is hand, toru is to take. Teni toru is to take it in your hand, to grab, to hold. So, teni totte is the te form of that. So, teni totte goran nasai. Goran nasai is sort of like have a look,、uh, check it out. So, teni totte goran nasai is like, hey, you know, feel free to you know touch it and you know see for yourself how wonderful my merchandise is. Mama tada yake ni hari kitte ru ne. So, mama. Tara, mama.、Um, it's not really mama. Okay, they borrowed it from English, but it's not quite the same connotation. Not, not quite the same feeling as mama would be in English. Mama is more baby speak.、Uh, Japanese, it's kind of baby speak, but not so much. It's more like just mom. Sometimes mommy. Sometimes I'll translate it as mommy. Sometimes I'll translate it as mama if I really feel like it works.、Uh, but mom is pretty much the best translation of mama. So the small tsu with. Tada! If you add that to the end of anything, usually a person's name or mama, <laughs>、uh, tada,、um, it basically means you're 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 about to rant about that person. You're kind of scoffing at that person. You're about to complain about that person.、Um, and sometimes it's in an endearing way, like oh you. <laughs> so oh, mama tada, it's like oh god mom.、Uh, it's that feel to it. So yake ni it. Means awfully, but it, it kind of means awfully considering the circumstances. Surprisingly awfully. Hari kitteru. So hari kitteru is to be like really hyped up, to be really fired up.、Um, and then hari kitteru、uh, is the like te ru form of that. So is really fired up, not just to be really fired up, but is really fired up. So, geez, mom is like oddly really hyped up right now. Uh, wane is kind of just this feminine, like you know, kind of ending to the sentence. Like, don't you agree? Then Usagi retorts with, again, one of these little, like, clever, like,、um, sort of joke, sort of one-liner things that Usagi does a lot of, and I don't think it ever came across in the、um, translations I saw of Sailor Moon.、Um, shoubai ni, so shoubai is like sales.、Um, ni means like two sales. Uh, mezameta uh, to awaken. Uh, mezameta n janai、uh, is like, don't you think she's awakened? So it's like it means、um, maybe she's awakened her inner saleswoman, <laughs> kind of thing. Mom says, "Sa, irashai masé." So sa means come on, irashai masé. Welcome, hi, I'm selling you stuff. Dore mo means any or all. Each, every one, yes, ku natte masu. So yes, ku、uh, comes from yasui, which means inexpensive or cheap.、Uh, so yes, ku is that adverb of that. So cheaply,、uh, yes, ku naru means、uh, become cheap. So yes, ku natte, yes, ku natte masu, or yes, ku natte ru means、um, it is becoming cheap. Which is, you know, literally what that is, but it's bad English. We wouldn't say it that way. We would say, "Oh, step right up! Look at them all. Everything is going cheap, or everything has been reduced. All items must go." It's that kind of feel to it. And then Moruga, the monster of the day, we discover. Bum bum bum! Naru's mom is actually possessed by Morga. Orokana ningen domo. And she says, "Orokana ningen domo." Orokana. That is kind of a more Royal、um, heightened way of saying baka, stupid. So orokana, foolish.、Um, Ningen domo. So like foolish humans. Wareraga oinaru shihaisha. So wareraga means our. Waga usually means my. Wareraga means our. Oi Narushi Haisha, our great ruler, our great leader. Ni, so that particle means two, so like two or four. Our grand great leader. Energy, so something's going to happen to energy. Some verb is going to happen to energy. Sasageru, you might remember earlier, means to bestow, to give, to offer. 
sasageru ga yoi. <laughs> okay, so sasageru ga yi. Um, even that is kind of a little like heightened kind of speech. Um, but sasa, sasageru ga yi is like, you should. Um, I kind of command that, but you know, you should um, do this thing. So you should offer, you should bestow. Um, yoi is just sort of like the uh, more heightened classic version of saying i. So yoi means i, it means good. Um, so sasageru ga i or sasageru ga yoi literally means like giving your energy to our great leader is good <laughs> is what it literally means. But it's more like, you know, you shall do this thing. Um, and it's kind of like a command and kind of like a suggestion at the same time. And subete is all, so uh, give, you shall give, you shall bestow all your energy to our grand leader. <laughs> Jade says, Atsumatte kuru. So you might remember atsumaru. Atsumeru means to collect, to gather. Atsumatte kuru means it is being gathered and coming to me, basically. Um, more and more is being gathered, basically. That's what te kuru form of a verb means. Te iku means like it's kind of going <laughs> continuously doing the verb. Kuru means like it's coming into this verb. So more and more is coming into me energy he's talking about. Hoseki no kagayaki. So hoseki is a jewel, gem. Uh, no, my chicken's done. I'll finish this explanation first. So, hoseki no is a jewel. Z, kagayaki is a shine, a glimmer, sparkle. So, the sparkle of a jewel. Ni. So, this is a particle. We're gonna add a verb after the jewel sparkles, and I'll explain how those are connected. So, misereta. Notice that the kanji for this misereta is different. Okay, so miseru. Woo, camera jerk. <laughs> so, miseru. Um, with this kanji, whoa, this kanji. So miseru with this kanji, it means to show. But miseru this way, misereta, uh, means more to bewitch, to be entranced by. It does not mean uh, to show. So note the kanji difference. So misereta is to be like bewitched, to be hypnotized, to be taken in by. So hoseki no kagayaki ni misereta means like to be taken in by, to be entranced by, to be hypnotized by the sparkling jewels or the sparkles of the jewels. So think of that whole phrase, uh, taken in by, hypnotized by, the sparkles of the jewels. Think of that whole phrase, put it in brackets, and think of it as an adjective to describe the next noun that's going to come after it, which is orokana ningen domo. So foolish humans. So the foolish humans, uh, what about those foolish humans? Let's have a word or a phrase that describes those foolish humans who were uh, taken in by, hypnotized by, um, bewitched by, the lured by, the uh, sparkle of the, the jewelry. And then take that whole thought, put that whole thing in brackets, add a no to the end of it, so apostrophe s, so those humans that were stupid and they were taken in by the jewelry, shiny, blah de blah, z, energy. <laughs> so the energy of the stupid foolish humans who were lured by the sparkles of the jewelry. So notice how that sentence basically just do the whole thing backwards, and that's the sentence in English. Queen Beriru sama mo sazokashi o erokobi ni naru dearo. Queen Beriru sama, Queen Beryl, uh, mo means also. So he's probably referring to myself. I believe this sentiment, but Queen Beryl will also agree with me with this next thing that I'm about to say. Sazokashi is kind of like indeed, or um, it's almost like doch if you speak German kind of like, um, I, I know this to be true. I think indeed is a pretty decent translation of it on its own, sazokashi. O yorokobi ni naru. This is a polite way of saying yorokobu. <laughs> so yorokobu is a verb which means just to to um, rejoice, to be pleased about something. So o yorokobi ni naru, the o makes the yorokobi part polite. Uh, ni naru uh, means becomes. So politely becoming joyful is literally what that means. Oyorkobi ni naru. De aro. So de aro uh, is like the form of de aru, which again is sort of like a literary way. People don't really talk like that. The narrator in Chibi Maruko chan uses de aru all the time. Um, but it's like, yeah, it is indeed the case that. <laughs> so basically he's saying Queen Beryl will surely be as pleased as I am about this 
turn of events. Morugayo. So if you say somebody's name and follow it with yo, you're basically just addressing that person. Like, hey, Morga, dear Morga, oh, Orga. Uh, yo, it is sort of more like villain royal sort of speak. So it'd be like, like, yay, Morga, or oh, Morga, or, or listen, Morga, or just Morga. <laughs> Sarani means like even more, like we're already doing this thing and let's, let's do more of it. Oku no means uh, many, numerous. Energy, so oku no energy means like a lot of energy, more energy. So sarani oku no energy, it's like we're already gathering a lot of energy, let's gather even more energy. O, <laughs> atsumeyo, so I jumped ahead. Atsumeyo, again, it's the imperative, let's do this, so let's gather. So let's gather even greater amounts of energy than we're already doing. And then Moruga says, hi. So, yes, sir. So that is the end of this scene of the first episode of Sailor Moon. Learn how to talk like a villain. Um, again, you don't necessarily want to use this kind of speech pattern when you're having conversations with people in contemporary Japan, unless you want to sound silly. Um, if you do have that kind of sense of humor, like I have that kind of sense of humor, and I do like to throw in like majestic speech in my conversation. It is part of my personality. So if you do have that kind of personality where you would kind of throw in this sort of speech, um, go ahead and try out some of these phrases. Until my next Sailor Moon video, bye! And another 25 minutes for the chicken. I don't know if I can finish this in 25 minutes. We'll see. I'm hungry. I want my chicken and rice. Oh wow, I'm gonna be done pretty soon, sweet.